and media hound that he is. Uh, cardiologist with SLU Care and SSM Health SLU Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Michael Lim. Good morning. All right. Uh, we were joking off the air. That's why we're having a little fun with him. Uh, all right. So uh, mental health has been a big issue the last couple of days because of this shooting down in um, Florida. And mental health, a big issue that doesn't get enough attention. We thought we'd ask you about mental health. And what are your thoughts as you sit and watch this debate? Well, uh, I think the... The issue with respect to mental health and you know, if the current status, we're going to give some sort of one word answer. It's not good. Right. Uh, there's uh, a, a lot fewer opportunities uh, for people with significant uh, uh, psychiatric conditions to be really well treated. Um, many, many years ago, there were hospitals dedicated to inpatient psychiatric care. Uh, most of those have closed. Uh, they've transitioned uh, uh, most of that to outpatient care, uh, but that means that uh, that person or those people actually have to actually start seeking that care, um, and that becomes highly problematic. Uh, we've also uh, basically politicized and uh, denigrated the concept of having a mental illness. Mm -hmm. There's a serious moniker on right. that. And that's a really bad uh, mark to kind of own. Nobody wants to actually list that on their resume of, oh, I've been treated for a mental illness. Uh, and so there's uh, the social aspect of trying to hide that. And I think these things then come out uh, in terms of uh, the last week's school shooting, but this is just another one in a long line. Uh, of of really bad things which happen. But mental health manifests itself in all different ways. It's not just school shootings. A lot of people say um, some of the drug epidemic is these people who are depressed who are self-medicating. Uh, the drug ed epidemic absolutely has a significant portion of people who are self-medicating uh, for depression or other illnesses. Uh, uh, homeless population across the country or in St. Louis, uh, a significant number of them uh, do have those issues which potentially could be uh, more controllable or treatable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, taking better care of, of our uh, comrades uh, that have mental illnesses demands an exceptional amount of compassion. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's that, that statement was, like, oh, he's just crazy or she's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, there, there are mental conditions that, that are really bad, mm -hmm. uh, but we have some ability to control some of them. Now, some of them aren't as good, but, you know, this demands a heck of a lot of compassion. This amount, this, you really have to look past several different things and start saying, wow, they actually could have an underlying condition. Schizophrenia is, is a terrible mental illness. Um, and, and if you were to see somebody with schizophrenia, you would say, this person's crazy. Uh, it's in some ways controlled by medications, and so those schizophrenic symptoms can be uh, managed to a degree. It's not curable. Uh, but the worst thing is a paranoid schizophrenic. And so when you have paranoia and schizophrenia on top of each other, now you have potentially a very dangerous person to themselves and to others. And if they don't have the opportunity of, of getting any of this care or right. controlling these symptoms, I, that that's an individual person, but there's a lot of them, unfortunately. Right. And you hear a lot of people with mental illness say that they don't feel like themselves, and that's why so many of them don't take their medication. Yeah, so the medication kind of numbs them and dumbs them down, and so there's some issues with respect to am I better off on the medication or not. Uh, clearly, some of these psychiatric conditions uh, don't necessarily give people the best ability to make those choices, uh, but everybody still has a right to make their own choices, and so uh, that's a different uh, sort of push and pull kind of thing in terms of, of mental care. Uh, and, and what our condition is in, in the region and, and in the country. Um, it's hard to sort of say, no, you have to do this. Um, it was a little easier, and that's where the, the inpatient psychiatric care was a little more prominent, where people would get sort of put there, um, potentially against their will. And, of course, there's a whole long list of horror stories and, and movies and, and books that have been written about those places, too. Are there more people suffering from depression today? And there's one thing between feeling blue and just, you know, feeling blah, and then clinical depression where, it's, you know, you've got some major issues. Are there more people suffering today than before? I don't know the absolute numbers or statistics on that, but it wouldn't surprise me. 
uh, you know, in your studio, there's the three TV banks behind me. Right. Uh, just before I came on, I was glancing at two of them, and you just, it, it, just for 20 seconds, and you look at what's being talked about and the things run across on the bottom, and what's uplifting? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a lot of things that just seem really upsetting. Uh, there's, um, we turn weather into national travesties right. almost sometimes uh, when you get, you know, and certainly ice is bad, but I mean, it, it's a, it's a right. breaking news and it's all this other stuff right. and it's in your face and, and this shock whole, whole concept. And so, uh, and, and then you start looking at and start saying, uh, you know, the Vegas shootings, the school shootings, the, the other just bad things that are going on, um, the, the coverage of our government right. and, and uh, well the I coverage think, of an ice storm yeah is, well, right you, you, you try and put the fear of god into people because it's an ice storm so every, everything i think points to the fact that it's a lot harder to be you know buoyant happy right. uh, uplifted on a daily basis mm -hmm. uh, but i think there's still opportunities to do so and 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 that's where i guess you know i, I always try in our segments here to say well you know <laughs> the sky isn't falling right. what can we do right so there's something good that happens every day uh, there's something good in your life that happens every day, and uh, uh, you know the old the old basketball coach from from North Carolina State that passed on. You talked about like you know Jim Belvano. Jim Belvano. We talked about you know like, what's a good day. He's like you know a good day. You get to laugh, you get to cry in the same day. That, that's a great day. Right. And, and and there's something to laugh about on a daily basis. I hope for most of our listeners here and there might be something to cry about and that's okay too yeah. uh, and that balance is is healthy and human but your point though that we we stigmatize it we make it harder to get help and you know and and so we put barriers to help and then stigmatize it when you do get help Absolutely. That's a recipe for disaster. It is, and it's it's a, another sort of uh, parallel manifestation of the, the political fight that happens over right. who pays for health care. Yeah, no easy answer. Uh, Dr. Michael Lim, cardiologist with SLU Care and SSM Health SLU Hospital. Doctor, good good stuff. Thanks for coming Thanks. in. Thanks. Cry and smile today. Cry and smile.